What's up everybody, it's Matt from TDM Style here and we are finally back with another cosplay build video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to put together a Matt Murdock cosplay from Marvel's Daredevil series. Now, I love the Daredevil series. I'm very excited for season three. And um, so I decided it was finally time for me to put together the Matt Murdock cosplay, which should come as no surprise. I mean, given my previous cosplay endeavors, you should probably know by now that I tend to lean towards uh, cosplays revolving around suits and ties. And overall, I just think that Matt Murdock has a very cool look and it's very recognizable, especially given the show's popularity. This is also a very simple outfit. It's one that you can uh, easily put together with a lower budget, so I felt like it was a no-brainer. Now there is actually a pretty great article um, on putting together a Matt Murdock outfit on tvstyleguide.com, so I'm gonna put a link for that in the description box below, as I, uh, I will be referencing a couple of points from that article in this video. So let's take a quick overview of the entire outfit, and then we'll break it down into pieces. So if we take a look at Matt Murdock's civilian clothes at basically any point in the show, you are going to see a suit and tie with an Oxford cloth button down shirt, black belt, black dress shoes, of course the blind cane, and probably the most unique element of his outfit are his sunglasses. Now let's start breaking this outfit down and we'll start with potentially the most expensive piece, the suit. Now, Charlie Cox has a number of different suits that he wore throughout the show, um, but the main points that you want to keep in mind here is that they are all a shade of either black, gray, or navy blue. Now, these are all uh, single-breasted, two-button suits. They seem to generally just have the uh, single center vent in the back of the jacket. And the other main thing is that they're all pretty plain. He doesn't wear any suits with crazy patterns. I mean, I think probably the most pattern suit that you see in the show is a, a navy blue one that has a very light uh, window pane check. I think my personal favorite is this uh, gray herringbone suit that you see in a number of episodes and most prominently you can see it uh, in series one episode three. Now this suit in particular was easy for me to identify. This one is for sure a Paul Smith suit. Um, there is a scene in this episode where he uh, opens up his jacket and realizes that he's bleeding through his shirt. And during that scene, you can see uh, Paul Smith's signature stripe on the inside of the lining, and you can just barely make out the Paul Smith label on the inside pocket. Now, based on that, um, and uh, as mentioned in that TV Style Guide article, there was an interview with Stephanie Maslansky, who was the costume designer for Daredevil and Jessica Jones, and she did mention that most of his suits were Paul Smith because the cut just fit him the best. Now, obviously, Paul Smith suits are not cheap, um, but the, the beautiful thing about this cosplay is that you don't need the screen-accurate suit to look the part. Now, if you are planning on buying a suit for this cosplay, I would recommend that you go for either a charcoal gray or a navy suit over a black one, um, simply because you get more versatility out of those suits for everyday wear rather than a black suit, so you can get more bang for your buck. So the uh, suit that I've gone with here is a charcoal gray that I already had, and the, the cut looks fairly similar. Um, obviously, this is not herringbone, um, but that's okay. He does also wear some uh, other gray suits throughout the show that are not herringbone. Um, I've got the uh, dark gray sort of blackish buttons, and um, so I think it just looks the part. So moving on to the shirts, as I mentioned, you basically want to look for either a white or light blue Oxford cloth button-down shirt. Now, of course, you could go with a regular dress shirt here instead of the Oxford button-down, but as far as the character and getting into character is concerned, I think the Oxford cloth is kind of important because it is, it's a much more textural cloth than a typical dress shirt, and um, I think the button-down collar is just sort of like, you know, it stays in place a little bit easier so again for a blind person who's not going to be checking their tie in the mirror throughout the day and things it just sort of uh, makes it easier for him to make sure that he stays looking tidy. Now, uh, again, as mentioned in that article, it's possible that another consideration for the Oxford shirt was that the cloth by nature just has a little bit more of like a ruffled casual look. It doesn't look quite so neat in like a freshly pressed dress shirt. And again, it makes sense for the character. Now, we don't know totally for sure what brand or brands of shirt uh, Charlie Cox wore throughout the show. There was a mention again in that TV Style Guide article about there's a photo with a caption um, of Charlie Cox that said he was wearing a black fleece shirt. 
Now, Black Fleece was a designer line made by Brooks Brothers, and those shirts go for about $200 a piece. So, I don't know about you, but for me, that was way too steep for like a plain white Oxford button down. Um, so, you can get their Red Fleece line. I believe those are about $50 or $60 a piece, brand new. Um, or if you want to go with the lower budget option, like I did, you can go for something like this. This is a Van Heusen button down. I got this for uh, about $25. And, you know, I like Van Heusen as a brand. Generally, their cut fits me very well, um, and I find that the uh, quality is pretty good for a lower price and it's still gonna look the part. I mean, once you're buttoned up and you got a suit over it, no one is going to know whether you're wearing a Van Heusen or a $200 Brooks Brothers shirt. So now let's talk a little bit about the tie. And now this is an area that I admittedly don't know much about as far as what the screen-worn ties were. Um, but you know, most of his ties, as I said, are just a plain black or plain navy blue. So you can get away with pretty much anything. So I'm just going with this very simple uh, sort of matte black tie that I already had in my closet. Just works great for the look. So, I mean, considering Stephanie Mosensky's track record with uh, Jessica Jones clothing and that sort of stuff, we can guess that maybe Charlie Cox's ties were either Paul Smith or John Varvatos or something. But um, again, this is something that no one's really going to know once you're suited up. I mean, it's just a plain black tie or navy blue or whatever. So I would suggest just going for one of those because you're going to get the most versatility out of it and it's going to look the part. So moving on to accessories, we can see that basically with every Matt Murdock outfit, he's wearing a plain black dress belt with a silver buckle and a pair of uh, black Oxford shoes. So again, I've just gone for the uh, closet cosplay route here and I've got uh, just this pair of black dress shoes by Aston Gray that I already had and this plain black dress belt and um, it's gonna look fine. And lastly, we're gonna move on to the two most important accessories that are going to make this cosplay. And the first is a blind cane. Now, um, according to that uh, TV Style Guide article, and there's a, a number of posts on the RPF, but most of those are about the actual Daredevil suit, but uh, someone did identify this Ambutech brand as the screen used one. Um, so I picked myself up one from Amazon. You can order right from Ambutech's website. Um, I think this was about $25. And, uh, you know, it's a four-point folding cane, and I think basically the one thing that I noticed um, just looking at the one in the show is that he only has the red section um, towards the tip of the cane. A lot of these other canes have a uh, red section near the handle as well. But otherwise, as long as you have one of these, you're going to look the part. And what I think is the most important part of this outfit, the sunglasses. Now the screen worn sunglasses were custom made for Charlie Cox, so unfortunately it's not, you know, like Ray-Bans or something where you just, you know that it's those and you can go buy them. Um, so this does lead to a little bit of trickiness getting these. Now there are plenty of, um, you know, these sort of 60s style round sunglasses for like really cheap on Amazon and a number of other places, and you can get them with red lenses. Problem is that all of those uh, cheaper ones that I've seen, the lenses are like candy apple red. I mean like bright, bright red. And obviously, uh, if we look at his glasses in the show, these are not bright red lenses. They're this sort of darker kind of blood red color. And they do have a little bit of a mirrored finish on the front. I mean, there are plenty of scenes where they almost look black, actually. But, uh, you know, and you can see that the front looks a little bit mirrored. You can't just see straight through to his eyes. And again, with a lot of these cheaper glasses with the bright red lenses, they're not mirrored. So, um, you know, you can definitely save a few bucks there, but I don't think that they're the greatest greatest looking option. So what I've got here are the replica Murdoch glasses by Magnoli Clothiers. And um, to be quite honest, I think that these are absolutely the best bet if you want glasses that are really going to look like Charlie Cox's. I mean, they've got the design down, a stainless steel frame. They've got the dark blood red lenses which just have that perfect slight mirroring on the front. Got the black uh, plastic tips on the arms. And the other point um, that was a, a big seller for me is that the lenses were weren't too big. Um, a lot of the cheaper glasses, I found that the lenses are like huge once you get them and they just sort of look weird. They don't really look quite right. So these normally are uh, $75 from Magnolia's website, which um, might seem a little bit pricey, but I think that these, you know, it, it's worth it because they're sunglasses, they look great, so you can definitely get a lot of mileage out of these. They're not just for a cosplay. So that does it for the outfit and accessories, and so now we can just talk a little bit about the hairstyle. And once again, this is very simple. Uh, basically, you're just going for a standard side part, and it looks like he's got no product in his hair. I mean, basically, it looks dry. It looks like he just sort of combed it and went on his way. 
um, again, makes sense for the character. So if you are going to use any kind of product to keep your hair in place, I would recommend using something with a really dry matte finish so that it looks like you have no product in your hair. Um, and I would say to use just a very, very small amount just to keep your hair looking very natural. So obviously my hair most certainly does not look the part for this right now. I mean, it's too long. I've got blonde highlights. Um, his sides are a little bit longer. He's got more of a uh, blended haircut. But so I've just gone with the sort of standard uh, side part and just kind of smushed everything back just to make it look as close to the style as I can working with what I have. So I would guess that um, probably the top of his hair at the longest point was maybe four inches long. I mean, when it drops down a couple episodes, you can see it's like basically right above his eyebrows. So I would say something around there would look the part. So now that we're done talking about it, let's get suited up and take a look at the whole cosplay together. So that does it for this Matt Murdock cosplay build video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun putting it together and I'm looking forward to uh, wearing this for this year's con season. Now, as I mentioned, I actually have a second new cosplay coming up as well that's going to require uh, some tailoring work on my part to create, but uh, looking forward to revealing that at some point in the near future. Please stay tuned to my channel. I got plenty more content coming up very soon. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.